Okay, so this is the second video of the Open Economy series. Um, if you have not watched the first one, I would suggest that you go back and check out the Open Economy basics because you're going to need quite a lot of stuff from that video in order to do well for this one. So we're going to be learning about zero capital mobility and um, let's just do a quick recap on what is zero capital mobility. So zero capital mobility basically means that there will be no funds that will be able to cross national borders to seek a high return. And that means the capital account is going to be equal to zero. That's because there's no funds in, there's no funds out, there's nothing to account for. So the balance of payment, which is originally made up of the current account and the capital account, is now only made up of the current account. So in the previous video, we discussed that the current account is made up of net transfers, investment income, as well as net exports, which is actually the key focus in introduction to economics. So at equilibrium, what you need to know is that the balance of payment, which is the current account, which is also the net exports, should be equal to zero. So if I'm going to plot a graph with the net exports on the vertical axis and time on the horizontal axis, what can happen is that my net exports might be in the positive region because I have a scenario whereby my exports are more than my imports. So my exports can be more than my imports because obviously either my exports have increased or the amount of imports has decreased. And the amount of net exports can also fall to a final equilibrium of zero when my exports somehow become lesser than my imports, which is caused by a fall in exports or an increase in the imports. At the same time, my net exports can also be in the negative region. So when we start from zero, we go into the negative region when our exports is less than our imports. And this is caused by either a decrease in exports or an increase in imports. So to get back to the final equilibrium of net exports equals to zero, my exports would have to be more than my imports. So this can be caused by either an increase in exports or a decrease in imports. We now turn our attention to the aggregate expenditure function, which is going to affect your IS curve. So you got to know this pretty well. So what's going to happen to your aggregate expenditure function is you're going to add on exports and we're going to add on imports. We're not going to exactly add on imports. We're going to deduct imports from the AE function actually. So this is what your exports functions look like. So it's actually a function of the real exchange rate. So if you don't understand what the real exchange rate is, please watch the previous video. So X not over here is simply a sensitivity of exports to the real exchange rate. So how much do exports increase given a change in the real exchange rate? So what you need to know is that the exports and the amount of exports and the real exchange rates actually have a positive relationship. You see, when my real exchange rate is going to increase, which is actually a real depreciation of the domestic currency, domestic goods and services become cheaper. Therefore, foreigners are going to buy more of our stuff and that's going to make our exports increase. So you can see from here that there is a positive relationship between exports and the real exchange rate. So let's take a look at it on the other way around. So let's say epsilon goes down, which means a real appreciation of the domestic currency. Our goods become more expensive. So foreigners are going to buy less of those kind of stuff. Therefore, exports are going to fall. And that sucks, right? So you can see that there is, again, a positive relationship between epsilon and exports. Moving on to imports. So this is what the imports function would look like. So you got M0 multiplied by the real exchange rate plus M1 times Y. So M0 over here is also a sensitivity of imports to the real exchange rate. And M1 over here refers to your marginal propensity to import. I think we have guessed that by now. So knowing this, if I'm going to take the marginal propensity to import, plus the marginal propensity to consume, plus the marginal propensity to save, what do you think I'm going to get? Well, if you have guessed the number one, then you're absolutely right. Well, the reason for this is quite simple. Um, with all the money that we have, we can either spend it on consumption, we can either save it, or we can either spend it on foreign goods and services, right? So that's pretty simple. So the important points of the imports function you need to know is that imports and real exchange rate actually have a negative relationship. Thanks for watching a sample of the Quick Economics online learning experience. We hope you've enjoyed it. We believe that true happiness lies in realizing ambitions and dreams. That's why we make our products specific to your needs. Simple to understand and captivating, so that you can learn effectively while saving time. Realizing those ambitions and dreams. The Quick Economics online learning experience is a range of supplementary lectures, tutorials, and exam solutions in the form of videos, 
which you can conveniently view anytime, anywhere. Watching our videos before and after your regular lessons at school, we aim to give you joy in learning and build academic confidence at the comfort of your own relaxed learning environment. So how can you begin? We welcome you to purchase Quickie Dollars to redeem the videos for full access to the Quickonomics online learning experience. Thank you for starting with Quickonomics.